Yo, what's going on guys? It is Tom and welcome back to a brand new video and finally the Mixed Maker Career Mode is upon us and unfortunately I couldn't get this out on the Sunday which I promised due to a couple of issues which I found out were replay files corrupting whilst I was trying to render the, the video so there will be a few less replay cams than what I normally like in this video but I think I finally sussed out the problem and we're going to jump straight into the video. Now as you can see right now we're currently focusing on the task in hand Mixed Maker getting down to grips with the brand new Baku Street Circuit in the 2016 season and it's a very tricky circuit, you know, a street circuit mixing in with this massive, massive pitch train. You've got to try and have a good car setup and a good balance on the car. Now, hopefully, you guys are looking forward to the return of this series and many other series. We've got loads of things planned up, up my sleeve, like I said in the previous video. But uh, we're going to focus on this one now. And this is the main video that we're going to be doing today. And now another one in two days' time, hopefully. But uh, focusing on practice. Mick Schumacher is getting down to work, like I said. And he's so far smashed the track acclimatization. And he's also on his way to smashing the tire wear test. Even though he got a few green tire laps in there, he's mainly smashing it. And uh, the man is working quite nicely around this Baku circuit as it's no longer the worst car on the grid as you guys know because of the performance chart. Now um, as you can see skipping on to the final part of practice and uh, Mick Schumacher actually quite easily managed to smash the target at least a 30 point barrier of the qualifying test. As you can see getting home in the, in the green sector and he actually tried to go for purple but unfortunately it wasn't possible as this track does have quite excessive demands for a track time. But overall we're now going to jump into qualifying. So moving into qualifying on a beautiful Saturday evening and now this is when it gets tense and when it gets interesting as the cars really are put to work and the engines get turned up for the Saturday qualifying session and obviously this is a track that should favour in theory the Manor car especially with that massive massive pit straight however this track is known on this game for having the AI be very very quick and almost a bit too quick but anyway we're going to see what Mick Schumacher can do in qualifying and so far in Q1 a successful lap there that gets him momentarily up into P13 on the super soft tyre and, and actually that lap would actually be his best lap of the session and he would finish off that session with that lap and only just getting through on P16 on the bubble there almost getting beaten by Stoffel Van Dorme but now we're going to move into Q2 and this is going to be his full lap in the Q2 session as you can see the clouds have struck here at Baku slightly overcast and track temperature has dropped a few degrees which means obviously the grip ain't going to be as good as it was in Q1 but so far the first two 90 degree left handers so far so good for Mick Schumacher yellow flag behind which luckily doesn't affect the German driver as we now propel ourselves down into another 90 degree left hander this time for turn three down to second gear make sure you kiss the apex as close as you can to the wall on the inside then pick up some nice traction on the exit to throw into the 90 degree right hander almost a corner cut they were just about keeping it within the confines of the track limits now into turns five and six very tricky blind left right chicane here and the second apex very easy to cut here we're we'll trying to take it nice and easy as we pick up some good traction on the exit and now mick is preparing himself for turn seven and eight a double apex right hand here which bites twice and it's very easy to under understeer wide and hit the wall there but luckily so far for Mitch Schumacher now going through the castle section very narrow through here trying to hit, not hit the inside wall there as we now go into turn number 12 and Mick actually hit the inside wall and lost an end play and that is going to mean the end of his Q2 lap and also the end of his Q2 because as you can see the time is about to run out in the session so it looks like Mitch Schumacher is going to be starting the race from P16 after a disappointing qualifying and a very simple mistake that even Lewis Hamilton made in the rule life race but anyway we're going to move into the race So here we go, moving into race day for the Baku Grand Prix, or the European Grand Prix, should I say, in Azerbaijan. And this is round eight of the season, and so far, Mick Schumacher has had a really good record of scoring in every single race this season in the points. So obviously, this is a very tall order, considering he started from P16 on the grid, so... um. Mick's really got his work cut out here today in the European Grand Prix and hopefully he can try and pull it out of the bag and try and get some points but like I said it's going to be a very tall order because this track is well known on this game for the AI being very very competitive and OP and also let's not forget Mick Schumacher even though it's not the, the worst car on the grid anymore it is still a manor so obviously there's going to be a few restrictions there in terms of development and also just general pace but overall Let's see what Mick Schumacher can do. Obviously, you can see there, Nico Rosberg is on pole position for the Baku race or the Azerbaijan Grand Prix or the European Grand Prix. It's got three different names. But nevertheless, we're going to focus on the five red lights for the Baku Grand Prix. It's going to be lights out and away we go here for round eight of the season. And Mick Schumacher getting a pretty decent start off of the line there and actually going on the, on the uh, harder compound soft tyres here so as you can see opting for a slightly different strategy compared to the super softs as we now go into turn one trying to go side by side with Carlos Sainz here into turn two sliding one up the inside and also 
try another sniff up the inside of Roman Grosjean, but there's no room through there. However, he does get some pretty good traction on the exit. He's now going to hook up onto the slipstream of the Haas car and hopefully try and make a move possibly into the next corner. He's going to try and look for a gap. He's going to do a little, little Daniel Ricciardo switch, I believe, and try and look for the inside, but he thinks better of it and actually decides to stay behind Grosjean for the foreseeable future. And now he's going to try once again and go for the Ricciardo sort of switch and got the inside, but once again, no room through there. And with Grosjean defending quite nicely from the German driver who skipped later on onto the lap one for the first time this race. You're going to witness the ridiculous sip stream that we get on this massive back straight. Here comes Mick Schumacher. Look at this. He flies past Roman Grosjean and Daniel Kvyat on the, on the main straight. And the difference in speed with that Mercedes power unit is absolutely abysmal. They're going three wide behind us. Signs Kvyat and Grosjean, all of them three wide. And now we're actually going to have Kvyat side up by inside into turn one. But Mick Schumacher just about holds on and defends from him. But good action so far. And that's only on the first lap of the race. Having some three wide action. And now skipping onto lap three, you can see that the Williams up ahead they're both going side by side into turn number three. Williams, you know, both of their new drivers, or should I say one of the new drivers, Lance Stroll and also Bottas, side by side into turn three. Good action here from these two teammates, obviously trying to keep out of any sort of collisions that are possible that would hinder the team combined total score. But make sure we can try and look lively behind the two of them, trying to find a move, but there's no room through. Obviously, this is a street circuit, so Mickey struggling for some overall space. But now, look at this, a beautiful little switchback from Mick Schumacher gets the move on both of them, just like that, a double switchback and an absolutely fantastic overtake from the German on the slower tyres. So really nice double overtake there, very interesting and also very smart move from Mick Schumacher there. But now, on lap five, we've got a yellow flag for some reason. It seems to be behind, luckily. And I think a car's actually gone off. You can see in the mini up there, we've got a safety car for some reason. So I think a car might have gone off. I believe it might have been a Williams because obviously one of them dropped out of the top 10. And it looks like it is Valtteri Bottas' stroll pulls off into the pit lane. Bottas, as you can see, he's going all right at the moment. And he just, all of a sudden, just goes straight on at turn one. So very strange incident there for the Finnish driver. And also no smoke coming out the back of the car, which seems to be, it could be maybe some sort of electrical fault or maybe some other car problem not, that's not engine related. But the safety car was cooled out. And as you can see right now, we're currently just piling up behind Raikkonen and also Hamilton. And most people have come into the pit. And obviously, Mitch Schumacher starting on the slower compound tyre didn't need to come into the pit. So that's uh, also Hamilton who qualified at the same time. But nevertheless, now going on to a green flag situation. And look at the sip stream here from Mitch Schumacher on Lewis Hamilton. He's actually going to try and make a move on the British driver here up the inside. Can he get a move on Raikkonen as well into the first corner for the lead of the race? Not quite. He's going to have Hamilton around his outside. He's going to squeeze him out and make the move for P2 there. And let's just not forget on, on lap 9, Mitch Schumacher who started P16 is now in P2 in the European Grand Prix. So a fantastic comeback here from the German and what a performance he's pulling out of the bag in his first ever Baku race. But as you can see, Lewis Hamilton big in his mirrors trying to make himself look big and also aggressive. He's going to try and make a move up the inside now, returning the favour from the last lap and getting a massive slipstream down the pit strain, going up the inside and getting the move done before the braking zone and retaking P2 there from the German. And uh, overall, Mick can't really defend that position too much. Also, he's fighting a losing battle in this manner, so he might as well just let the Hamilton go and not waste any more time. But moving on to lap 10, the very next lap, now uh, Roman Grosjean wants a slice of the action. And here he comes down, massive slipstream from the Frenchman, slides up the inside. Is he going to pull off the move on the brakes on Mick Schumacher? Yes, he is, just about. Mick tries to go for the switchback and pulls it off successfully. Grosjean, who's on a super soft tyre, you can see there on the right-hand side. Mick's going to try and make him up the inside. A little bit of contact between the two of them as it goes side by side on the traction. And there's contact and Mix into the wall, as is Roman Grosjean. So double contact there and red damage on the right front end plate of Mick Schumacher there. So that's going to be critical damage and that may require a pit stop because that is quite severe, especially around the track, which is a street circuit. So we're going to try and get a replay of the action here. So you can see Roman Grosjean around the outside of Mick Schumacher into turn two. A little bit of contact there, a little bit of wheel banging and he just about has the room, but then he just runs out of space and I believe that might have been Mick's fault. Let me know in the comments down below, guys, whose fault you thought that was. But um, to me, that's definitely almost a racing incident slash Mick Schumacher's fault. But as you can see, the severe understeer almost forcing Mick into the wall there through the fast chicane at the end of the lap. And now uh, Carlos Sainz is going to fly past him as well. But now it looks like Mick Schumacher is going to gear up for a pit stop because his tyres are going to need a little switch. And also the front wing damage is way too severe. So as you can see, Mick now preparing himself for his first stop of the race and quite an unscheduled one and also it's completely broken the strategy because this is the one and only set of softs that Mick Schumacher had he was hoping to go very long in this race and because he's lost them now he's going to have to switch to either a set of mediums or super softs and basically do a lot more pit stops or do just one more and try and go to the end and it looks like it's going to be medium tyres on the mana car which I believe that's not something that the team or Mick wanted because the pace has not been good on those tyres all weekend and also a front wing change there just to really you know add some um 
pain to his misery in terms of a, a very long piss up and also Roman Grosjean you can see him there just coming out of pit lane just behind Mick Schumacher but um, like I said the medium tyres weren't a particularly favoured tyre for the German and he did try to put him to good work and so far it's working quite nicely for him as he's now on the back of Kevin Magnussen also on the medium tyres and he slides past on the left hand side way before the DRS zone and actually is going to get past the Danish driver fairly early and makes a move into P18 but uh, there's a question of trying to find a rhythm on this medium tyre and obviously around the track that hasn't got a lot of tyre where there should be quite easy to get into the end of the race and uh, as you can see skipping on to that 15 now with about 11 laps to go you can see that Mick is behind Nico Hulkenberg and into P17 so far he's going to try big up some Supreme on the German his fellow countryman here opening up the DRS he's going to pull to the inside he's going to breeze past Nico like he's not even there and that is a move done and dusted up into P16 and a personal best lap of the race and also a few more cars into the pits which promotes him up into P14 so uh, a couple more overtakes there from Mishimaka slowly making his way back into the top 10 however at the end of lap 16 Nico Hulkenberg was trying to respond on them soft tyres and here he comes Slipstream and now DRS wide open and here comes the German around the outside he's going to go side by side incredible action here and so much speed down this massive pit straight and Hulkenberg pulls off the move and retakes his position and which will now become P12 because we've got a few more cars in the pit lane so uh, so far so good for Mitch he's, he's got a pretty consistent rhythm in this latter half of the top 10 and also um, he's also just you know, just trying to basically keep you know drivers nearby. However, now Pascal Verlein, Mick's teammate, is looking very racy on them brand new soft tyres because he just picked a couple laps ago. And here he goes. He makes a move on his teammate, and uh, quite an easy one. Obviously, Mick Schumacher has been given orders not to fight him, probably, and he might just decide to make a nice easy move for him. However, moving on to the end of lap 18, now Carlos Sainz in the Jaguar is looking very very racy here and he's going to try and pull off a move on the super soft tyre so two compounds quicker than Nick and unfortunately there's not much response to this because Carlos Sainz is just so much faster and now Sergio Perez looking lively as well in the mirrors in the Force India or in the other Force, or in the other Force India should I say and uh, Sainz gets the move down there up into P12 which relegates Nick down to P13 and um now we've got a DRS zone coming up and this could potentially set back Mick even more. Now Sergio Perez looking very, very racy here behind the German driver. And here he goes, DRS wide open and he's just going to fly past him. And Mick doesn't have DRS because it's a double DRS zone. So Mick didn't pick it up on the main straight. So therefore he doesn't, he misses out on the entire back straight into turn three. So Perez makes a nice easy move into P13. And then P12 has actually got past Carlos Sainz. And these two have a bit of a dice up into turns five and six. And this is going to allow Mick to try and pull off the exact same move he did on the Williams trying to pick up the switchback but unfortunately he gets cut off by Sergio Perez because he springs out very wide almost lost his, his front wing end play once again there so very unfortunate basically a situation for Mick Schumacher where he thought he was going to pull it off but unfortunately he couldn't make the move stick and he has to sit back behind these two for a little while longer however moving on to lap 29 we've got a yellow flag here for some reason and the car's going slowly up ahead and it looks like it could be a harsh if I can see it but yellow flags are basically not allowing Mick to overtake and his Gutierrez is going so and basically Mick's trying to time it with the green flags to try and get past these guys because otherwise he's going to get a legal overtake and he decides to now slide up the inside as there's contact between the two and the green flag gets given even though he did cut the corner in my opinion he was allowed to do that because there was contact with Gutierrez and he's basically forced him to the inside but uh, crucially he makes the move on Esteban and we're going to look at a replay of what happened to the Mexican and it's a right front puncture for Gutierrez there so um, quite an unfortunate one for the harsh driver but look at this train of cars this little gaggle of cars he just holds up and it's, it's, it's almost like a chess game trying to get past the right time with the green flag I do believe signs pass on the yellow flag so he might get a penalty for that and as you can see there's, there's a little bit of contact between Mick and Esteban but eventually Mick gets past and as does also Sergio Perez and Jesse Button and then Grosjean actually hits the back of his teammate there but um, moving on to lap 22 now we've got a yellow flag once again but meanwhile we've got Sergio Perez making the move once again on Mitch Schumacher and Lance Stroll is out of the race so we've got a yellow flag for some reason and it's just behind us I believe Stroll is the next car behind and he goes straight on at the escape road so something's going on for Lance Stroll there and obviously Bottas retired earlier and we've got a safety car so this is massive for us because Mick Schumacher was in no man's land on these medium tyres and now he's got a chance of going on to super softs and try and make something happen at the end of this race but looking at the replay as to why it was triggered you can see that Lance Stroll basically has an engine blowout so a double Williams DNF in Baku with Bottas retiring from an electrical failure and Lance Stroll retiring from an engine blowout so both Williams out of the European Grand Prix but like I said focusing on the important thing now Mick Schumacher wasn't going to score points this race however the opportunity has been given to him because of this means that he can now pit for super softs and as you can see at the, end of lap, at the end of lap 22 he's not wasting any more time he's going to come in for his set of super soft tyres and also a little tweak on the front wing to try and be a bit more aggressive on the front end of the car with a few more laps to go and hopefully he 
can try and pull off a miracle which would be finishing in the points which is still going to be a tall order because I believe he's going to exit the pits way down in like P15, 16 or 17 so Mick's got a lot of work to do in these last three laps but if he can pull it off then that would be absolutely magnificent he's going to rejoin just behind Marcus Ericsson so now it's a really tall order the work has been cut out and it's going to be a very tricky task in P15 to try and get some points in the European Grand Prix with just over two racing laps here as you can see preparing to race trying to wait for the green flag Mick's trying to be very racy and smart trying to get past Marcus Ericsson here getting the pedal down side by side with Ericsson the flag goes green and instantly pulls off an overtake here and now he's going to try and make a move on Danny Kvyat into the first corner got to try and be brave here on the brakes up the inside of the Russian in the Jaguar trying to make a nice easy move up the inside of turn two and now trying to get past Stoffel Van Dorn who's the next person on the list of people he's got to try and get past into the top ten you can see that the points are well within reach here in Baku thanks to this last lap miracle here that's been given to us thanks to Lance Stroll so here we go on to the back straight up now into turn three massive tip stream of Stoffel Van Dorn is Mick going to go for the move yes he does a massive late dive bomb on the on the uh, Belgian driver makes a brilliant move there for P12 and he's now only a couple of positions off of point scoring places here Mick all over the back now Sergio Perez now going to the middle sector and the twisty section of the track here to turns five and six can he try and line up a move on the Mexican driver here gets some good traction on the exit on the brand new super soft tires he's going to try and go for a dive into this double apex right hander yes he does goes for a dive on the Mexican a little bit of contact a little bit of wheel banging but he gets the move done up into P11 and he's now behind Carlos Sainz Junior on lap 26 and this is the last lap of the race can Mick Schumacher try and make a move on on uh, Carlos Sainz for points and here he goes he's going to go for the late dive once again up the inside just like Stoffel Van Dorn a lap ago an incredible dive from from really far back and he pulls it off almost Daniel Ricciardo S on Valtteri Bottas in Monza 2016 in real life but uh, now going on to the final part of the race in the final couple of corners and look at this situation Pascal Verlaine in the manners in the points also Nico Hulkenberg and there's like four cars you can potentially take a really good position here look at the slipstream Hulkenberg flies up the road trying to make a move but he pulls out the slipstream too early and loses massive momentum and here comes Mick Schumacher now he's going to make a three wide which is going to become four wide with a McLaren Honda there's going to be four wide across the line and oh my god who won that I don't know who took the position there uh, it, it, Mick Schumacher Mick took the position Mick finished in P7 in the Baku race so absolutely incredible scenes across the line there four wide across the line absolutely incredible and that's just what the t that's what the slipstream does around this track and Mick picks up an incredible seventh place finish in the European Grand Prix out of nowhere he was well out of the points he started P16 and somehow he's managed to score points once again in Formula 1 and obviously this means for the drivers championship that he maintains himself in 6th place albeit losing a position to Max Verstappen he's still well within the top half of the table and then looking at the constructors you can see the man of you ever taken Williams for P5 so uh, Mick doing an incredible job there and also Williams with the double DNF losing out massively on points there but overall if you guys did enjoy the video then a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated and also if you subscribe to my channel that'd be absolutely fantastic if you did miss out on any of the videos on the screen right now, do urge you to go check them out and also subscribe to my channel with the big circle icon in the middle of your screen. But nevertheless, guys, like I said, hopefully you're happy that I'm back. Hopefully there'll be more videos from me soon and hopefully a couple more series along the way. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in my next one very soon. Goodbye.